Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and Collision in Unreal 4. Specifically, we'll be talking about Collision on the CPU and Collision on the GPU. So to get this started, I'm going to right click and we're going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty blank template. And we'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want. And then we'll open it up. Now, before we talk about Collision, there's a few things I want to set up. So in emitter update, we need to spawn something. So I'm going to add a spawn rate. And so we get a decent amount. I'll set this to something like 300. And so they're not spawning on top of each other. In particle spawn, I want to add a sphere location. And now after that's done compiling, our particles are a little big. So I want to come to initialize particle and I'm going to change the sprite size mode to uniform. And by default, our particle should be a lot smaller. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to add velocity. And specifically, I want to add velocity in a cone. Now, you most likely got this error. And what I want to do is I want to click on fixed issue so we can get solve forces and velocity. And you'll see that we got solve forces and velocity down in particle update. So for the add velocity in cone, the velocity strength, I'm going to set this to a random range float. And I'll set it to 200 and 700. And lastly, we don't want velocity on the X, we want velocity on the Z, because we want it to go up into the air. And we'll just take a look, see how that's all going. Perfect. And now the last thing I want to do is, in particle update, we're going to add gravity, gravity force. And once you add that, you're probably going to get this error. You just need to move solve forces and velocity below gravity, and it's good to go. By default, there is a negative 980 in the Z. This is representing gravity, so this is just fine. And we'll save this, and we'll just see that it's all working. It's going up in the air, and it's coming down. We've basically made a fountain. Now for collision. So collision can only be added through particle update. So we'll click on this plus icon, and you should see a category called collision, and then in there, there's a module called collision. And now when we add this, it's probably going to yell at you again, because once again, this needs to be above solve forces and velocity. Now once that's all squared away, we should be able to see all the details in here. And the first thing in this line that we see is CPU collision type. And if we click on this drop down, we have two options, ray traced and analytical planes. Now if we come up to emitter properties, and we change this to a GPU, and we come back to collision, you'll see that now it says GPU collision type. And we have a few options in here. It's GPU depth buffer, GPU distance fields, and analytical planes. So we'll go over each one of these, but let's cover the CPU first. So we'll come back to emitter properties and we'll change it to CPU. Now for all the collision types, the CPU ray trace is probably the most expensive, but it's also the most accurate. And by default, this one just works. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to come to my content browser and we're going to create a Niagara system and we'll name it correctly so that it says NS and we'll just pull this out into the world. I'll bring it up. You can see that this is bouncing off of everything. Put a G on the keyboard so we can just see them bouncing and going. Cool. Yeah. Now all the way at the bottom of our details, you can see that there's ray trace properties. And of course, this directly relates to the CPU collision type ray trace. You really look at these as optimizations. Now for the rest of the categories in here, collision radius, bounce, friction, age colliding particles, rest, these will be in all of the different collision types. And for the most part, these are pretty straightforward. You know, so we have our collision radius, which really this is just saying, how big do you want your collision to be? You know, how do you want the collision to be calculated? And so we can base this on our sprite or we can base this on our mesh. And then next we have bounce. You know, how bouncy do you want this to be? Maybe you don't want this to be bouncy at all. And then friction. How do you want your particles to move across the surface? And then our very last category, rest. How and when do you want your particles to come to a rest? So that's ray trace. The next one we have is analytical planes on the CPU. So when we do this, we'll let it compile. What you're doing here is you are setting a collision plane that is infinite along a certain axis. 
So for example, if we reduce this analytical collision plane position one to zero, you can see even in this preview window that now we have a collision surface right here. And if we go and look at it in the world and we save, you should see that these are now bouncing on that invisible plane. But that invisible plane is going infinite. So that's why you see these particles bouncing outside of this box, because they're not actually bouncing on there. They're bouncing on this analytical plane. All right, so that covers all of the CPU categories. Now we need to talk about the GPU. So I'm gonna come back up to my emitter properties, and I'm gonna change this to GPU Compute Sim, and I'll turn on Fixed Bounds, and now we'll come back to Collision. Now the first one we have is GPU Depth Buffer. And while this is really efficient, I find that this one is one of the most unreliable. So if we go and take a look at this in the world, you can see that it's spawning, um, and every now and then, every now and then, you should be able to see that it goes through and that there's some, some friction. Or even if you come and run your camera right through this and come back, you just see that they react a little bit. But this one is kind of the most unreliable for me. I think it really depends on the GPU that you have. Now, this is based on scene depth. So if you ever wanna take a look at your scene depth, you wanna come up to view mode in the top of your window, and then you wanna to come to buffer visualization. And if you turn on overview, you'll see a bunch of different debug views. But in the bottom left, you'll see scene depth. So this collision type is looking at this kind of view. So it is both dependent on your GPU, and it's also dependent on your camera view or your game view. So I'm gonna turn that off now, go back to lit, and we'll take a look at the next type. So the next type that we have in GPU collision is GPU distance fields. Now, once you turn this on, it may not be working for you right away. And there's a reason for this. You can see mine's working right now, but if you come to edit, project settings, and you type in distance field, you should see a category called lighting and generate mesh distance fields. You need to have this turned on for this to work. And once you do turn this on, you'll need to restart the engine. Now, what's interesting about this is these distance fields are originally for lighting. So I'm gonna close out of this. And basically what distance fields are, it's almost like generating a really low cost mesh around your other meshes. So for lighting, we can utilize these meshes to cast more efficient shadows instead of using a really complex mesh. In this case, we're using them for collision, more efficient collision. Now, if you wanna see what they look like, you wanna to come to show, and you come all the way down to visualize, and then in here, you'll see global distance field. If we turn that on, you'll get this very interesting view. But these are the mesh distance fields. Now, if we grab a mesh, and we move it, you can see how they're dynamically changing depending, depending on the position. But already, you can see where some of the limitation may lie, right? Depending on the distance, they change, right? And the thing is, these can't be generated in real time. They're only generated on the editor side. And if you just look at the shapes really close, you can also see that these aren't always precise, especially if you're using primitives. But it does get the job done. This is working pretty well. So we'll change this back so we're not seeing the debug. And now if we come back to collision, you'll see that our last one is also analytical planes. So just as a recap, the GPU depth buffer is probably the one that's not as reliable. The GPU distance fields, this is probably one of the best alternatives to the ray tracing, but there are a few caveats to it. And then analytical planes, that's probably the most efficient out of all of them, but you're probably only gonna wanna use that in very specific situations. And then of course our ray trace, which is the most precise but also the most expensive. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.